Hello and welcome to the Rakyat Times TV News. I'm Mick Hu. As the murder of Mongolian model Atantuya gets more traction, the verdict of Tan Sri Sisil Abraham's misconduct proceedings will likely be announced soon. And with the verdict, a revelation as to who ordered him to prepare the contentious sworn statement linked to the murder may also be forthcoming. According to a report in the Malaysian Insider, Ibrahim was said to be responsible for drafting the second statutory declaration, SD, read out by the late P. Bala Subramaniam. Bala was a private detective hired by political analyst Abdul Razak Baginda. Bala Subramaniam's lawyer, Amarik Sidhu, released a statement yesterday asking Abraham to also answer if he had received a telephone call from Dato Johari Razad in July 2008. Johari is Prime Minister Najib's brother. Sources told the Malaysian Insider that about 15 witnesses gave evidence at Abraham's proceeding. Amarik was also a witness in the proceedings and testified on behalf of the Bar Council, the complainant in the case. If Abraham is found guilty, he could either be warned, suspended, fined or, in the extreme case, struck off the roll. Several lawyers and a former senior editor of Haraka Daily had appeared before the committee which began the hearing evidence in March last year. And from one debacle to another scandal. This time, the 1MDB fiasco. Tony Poir, in his latest expose on the financial scandal plaguing Malaysia, has accused Prime Minister and Finance Minister Datuk Sri Najib Raza of lying yet again. Poir alleged that the Finance Ministry's reply to his query on the 3 billion ringgit raised by 1MDB using a government support letter was a contradiction of his own financial statement. He said that it appeared that not all the answers by the Ministry of Finance, particularly regarding 1MDB, could be trusted. The written reply states that the funds are meant for the joint venture company Abu Dhabi Malaysia Investment Corporation or ADMIC. But the financial statement says that ADMIC is a proposed joint venture to develop the Tun Raza Exchange TRX project in downtown Kuala Lumpur. Well, what can you make of that? And in Indonesia, a court on Monday dismissed an appeal by two Australian drug smugglers facing imminent execution. The country's legal chief said that the pair had exhausted all legal attempts to avoid the firing squad. Following the ruling, lawyers for Andrew Chan and Muren Sukumaran vowed to take the case to the constitutional court. But Indonesia's attorney general accused the legal team of playing with justice and said the move would not delay the execution. In its ruling on Monday, the State Administrative Court in Jakarta upheld a decision that it does not have the authority to hear a challenge to President Joko Widodo's rejection of the Australia's pleas for clemency. Chan and Sukumaran, the ringleaders of the so-called Bali 9 drug trafficking gang, were sentenced to death in 2006 for trying to smuggle heroin out of Indonesia. Widodo recently rejected their mercy pleas, typically the final chance to avoid execution. They are expected to be executed soon along with other drug convicts including foreigners from France, Brazil, the Philippines, Nigeria and Ghana. And with that, we come to an end of today's edition of Riot Times TV News. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place.